Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to look at uniform circular motion, skills practice 8.1. This skills practice focuses on calculations involving centripetal acceleration and centripetal force. This would be forces that cause curvature and thus point to the center of a circular curve. The acceleration always points in the direction of the force, so the acceleration also points to the center of the circular curvature. Let's just take a quick look at what the variables are in uh, these calculations. If we come across meters per second squared, well, that is going to be centripetal acceleration, uh, A sub C. If we come across meters per second, well, that's going to be our tangential speed. Tangential refers to the fact if something's going in a circle like this, so you have an object that's on a string and it's rotating in a circle, its velocity, its motion is always tangent or pointing straight ahead relative to that circle. So that if the string was cut, the object would just fly in a straight line, just like that. So the tangential speed uh, would be meters per second, and that's V. And then finally, R represents the radius of the circular curvature. Now, if we go to a centripetal force calculation like you see here, many of the variables are the same. However, if you see Newton's, that represents a centripetal force. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, centripetal force does not mean a new force. It just simply means any force you've already learned that causes circular curvature, like an applied force, okay, of a softball pitcher making a circular arc with the ball, okay, or a, a parent or a, a person taking a child by the hands and swinging them in a circle. Hey, that would be a a, um, an applied force causing circular curvature. Uh, if you take a, an object, a mass connected to a string and you whirl it in a circle, the tension in the string is a centripetal force pointing to the center of the circle causing circular curvature. Uh, on a roller coaster ride through a vertical loop, the normal force of the track pushing on the roller coaster points towards the middle of the circle. Okay, Gravity uh, keeps moons in orbit around planets and planets in orbit around stars and that points to the center of the larger mass so you have any force really can be a centripetal force uh, for the most part it can be a centripetal force and so centripetal force just is a generic category that describes any force that causes circular curvature and thus points towards the center of that circle so if i see newtons that would be generically centripetal force and fc is the variable we'll use for that. Uh, and then, of course, if we see kilograms, that would be mass. And that's M. Okay, let's begin. Number one, a runner moving with a speed of 8.8 .8 meters per second, that would be V, rounds a bend with a radius of 25 meters, that would be R. What is the centripetal acceleration, A sub C, of the runner? Well, let's first begin by filling out our organizing table here. So we know we are looking for A sub C, looking for centripetal acceleration. We're given 8.8 .8 meters per second, and we're given 25 meters. There's our radius, there's our speed. Now, the equation we're going to be using, if we look at the uh, variables that are grouped together here, you can see we're clearly solving for A sub C, so we would use this equation here on the left. Centripetal acceleration equals speed squared divided by radius. Since it's already isolated, we do not need to rearrange the equation. We can simply plug in and substitute numbers. So let's do that. 8.8 .8 squared on top divided by 25. Okay, we have to remember to square this first and then divide by 25. If you do this correctly, 
you should send, you should end up with about 3.1 meters per second squared. Please make sure that you're attempting this with your own calculator. Remember, as always, to pause or rewind the video as you need to. Let's continue. Number two. Racing on a flat track, a car goes 32 meters per second, that's V, rounds a curb 56 meters in radius, well, that's R, what's the car centripetal acceleration? So again, we're looking for A sub C. We're given 32 meters per second. We're given 56 meters. There's our speed, there's our R. Let's complete the calculation. We're going to go 32 squared divided by 56. 32 squared is 1,024. Divide that by 56, and we get about 18. Now, if you wanted to round it to the tenths, 18.3 would be fine. I, if you round it down to 18, that would be fine as well. So about 18 and a third meters per second squared is our centripetal acceleration pointing to the center of that circular curvature. Number three, a 2.1 meter rope attaches a tire to an overhanging tree limb. A girl swinging on the tire has a tangential speed of 2.50 meters per second. If the magnitude of the centripetal force is 88 newtons, what's the girl's mass? We're looking for mass this time. We're looking for something different. So meters is our radius of curvature. Newtons is our force, meters per second is our speed. So let's list everything we're given. We're given 2.10 meters of radius. We're given 2.50 meters per second of tangential speed. And we're given 88 Newtons of force. And we're looking for mass. This time, we're gonna be using a different equation. Since it involves centripetal force, we're gonna be using the centripetal force equation that you see over on the right. Fc equals mv squared divided by radius. Now, in order to solve for m, you have to be able to get rid of this fraction, v squared divided by r. Let's begin by writing the equation down. So here's what we'll do. We'll write Fc, okay, leave some space equals mv squared divided by r, okay? Well, we have to get rid of that fraction. So here's what we're gonna do about that. We're gonna multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of that fraction. So if the fraction we're trying to get rid of to get mass by itself is v squared divided by r, the reciprocal of v squared divided by r would be r divided by v squared to both sides, r divided by v squared. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other side of the equation. Notice r cancels. Notice v squared cancels, and mass is by itself. Rewriting this, and I'll just move mass over to the left, equals f times r divided by v squared. Okay, centripetal force is 88 newtons times r, 2.10 meters, divided by 2.5 meters squared. Okay. So we're going to go 88 times 2.1, which is 184.8. Divide that by 2.5 quantity squared. We should be getting a mass of about 29 and a half kilograms. Again, if you rounded that up to 30 kilograms, that'd be fine too.
Number four. A bicyclist riding at a tangential speed, V, 13.2 meters per second, rounds a circular track. The magnitude of the centripetal force is 377 newtons, well, that would be F, and a combined mass of the bicycle and the rider is 86 and a half kilograms, that would be M. What is the track's radius? We're looking for R this time. Okay, let's list our given information. We're given 13.2 meters per second, 377 newtons, and 86 and a half kilograms. Okay, 13.2 is our speed, 377 is our centripetal force, and 86 and a half is our mass. Again, using our centripetal force equation, centripetal force equals mass times V squared divided by radius. Now this time, we're solving for the radius, which is in the bottom. So in order to do this, it's a really simple one-step little trick, which we affectionately call at the beginning of the year, the switcheroo. The denominator, through a couple of algebraic steps, always switches out with the other side of the equal sign when there's only one denominator down there. So let's, uh, if we switch that out, we get R equals MV squared divided by the force. Plugging into that, we're going to go mass, which is 86 and a half kilograms times V squared, 13.2 squared, divided by the force of 377. Okay, now to put this in our calculator correctly, you're going to start with 13.2 and then square it. Then you're going to multiply by 86 and a half. Lastly, you're going to divide by 377. And you should get 39.9 .9 or rounding it up to 40 meters. Again, please make sure you are attempting this yourself in your calculator. <laughs> Number five, a dog sits 1.5 meters, that's the radius, from the center of a merry-go-round that revolves at a tangential speed of 1.8 meters per second, well, that's our V. If the dog's mass is 18 and a half kilograms, that's our M, what is the magnitude of the centripetal force? We're looking for FC this time. Okay, so we're given 1.5 meters, that's our radius. We're given 1.8 meters per second, that's our tangential speed. We're given 18 and a half kilograms, that is the mass of our dog. Okay, the equation we're going to use is FC centripetal force equals MV squared divided by the radius. Since we're looking for centripetal force, we don't need to rearrange the equation. Simply plug into the equation. 18 and a half times our speed of 1.80, don't forget to square that part, divided by the radius of 1.50. So how would we put this in our calculator? Well, let's begin with 18, or excuse me, 1.8 squared. Okay, then we're going to multiply that times 18 and a half. which we get 59.94. Then we're gonna finally divide that solution by 1.5. Okay, we do that correctly, we get a centripetal force of about 39.96 or 40 newtons. Okay, and in our final question, we have a 905 kilogram car, that's our mass, travels around a circular track with circumference uh, 3.25 kilometers. What is the magnitude of the centripetal force? 
of um, 2140. Okay. Well, down on the bottom, we're gonna we're gonna fix something here. Okay, because we're looking for tangential speed. Okay, and the speed is what we're looking for. We're given the mass, 905. Okay, we're given the force, the centripetal force of 2140. But you can see, according to the equation we need to use, mv squared divided by r, we're missing the r. Okay, but we are given what's called the circumference. Now, 3.25 kilometers is 3,250 meters, right? We move the decimal three to the right. But here's what we're going to do. Circumference is equal to 2 pi times the radius. Let's solve this equation for radius. That way we know what to plug in for r down here, okay? Now, to solve for radius, we need to divide by 2 pi. So radius is the circumference, 3,250 divided by 2 pi. 2 pi is about 6.28. So dividing those two, we get roughly about 517 meters of radius. Okay, now we can complete the work. Well, we're looking for speed, which is up here. Now, in order to solve for speed, you're going to need to get rid of that fraction first. Then, on a second step, you're going to need to get rid of that exponent there. Okay, so this is going to require two steps. First, let's go ahead and write the equation down, leave some space, and let's attempt to get rid of the fraction first. Okay, we're trying to get rid of m over r to get v squared by itself. Now, to do that, we'll multiply by the reciprocal of m over r, which is r over m, both sides. r cancels, m cancels on the right. And what we have so far is centripetal force times radius divided by mass equals v squared. You can see v squared is the only thing left. Now, we'll go ahead and um, square, to get rid of the square, we'll go ahead and square root both sides. The square cancels the square root, and you can see v is by itself now. Okay, so the equation we're plugging into is v equals the square root of f times r divided by mass. Let's plug into that. Okay, the force is going to be uh, 2,140 times the radius of 517, close parentheses, and then divided by a mass of 905. So 2,140 times 517 is 1,106,380. Divide that by 905. We get about 1,222. Last step, of course, would be square root that. And we get about 34.9, or roughly 35, meters per second squared. OK, remember to, again, pause or rewind the video to the parts that you need it the most. And I hope you found this tutorial helpful.